So I've got a nice integral for you guys today that comes with a bit of story time. So the other day I was on a Zoom call about a super secret project that is upcoming with Black Pen Red Pen. This is a huge project guys, so you guys are gonna be very excited about it and you should stay tuned to make sure you don't miss it. And we were chatting and he said that integrals were dead on YouTube. And what he meant by that is that back in the day, you know, a year ago, two years ago, everyone was doing hard integral problems. And now it was hard for an integral problem to do very well because everyone's seen all of the integral videos that they want to see. But I found this integral and I couldn't help but make a video about it because I really wanted to do an integral video and I think this is a cool one. So let's maybe try and prove him wrong by getting a lot of views on this video. Okay, so what do we wanna do? We're calculating an indefinite integral, in other words, an antiderivative, and the function is one over the square root of cosine cubed times cosine of x plus a, and we're taking the square root of that. And this fact that we've got a sum inside of the cosine means we're probably gonna wanna use the sum angle formula for cosine, so let's recall that real quick. We've got cosine of alpha plus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. Okay, so let's see what we can do. Well, maybe we could simplify this cosine cubed a little bit by multiplying by one over cosine to some power in the numerator and the denominator. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So let's see what we get. Let's take this numerator and multiply by one over cosine squared, but I'm gonna write that as secant squared. And I'm gonna write that as secant squared because the secant squared will pair with the dx to look like the derivative of tangent. But then when I multiply in the denominator, I'll multiply by one over cosine squared, but instead of writing one over cosine squared, I'll write one over cosine to the fourth under the square root. So that way I can bring it inside of the square root pretty easily. Okay, nice. So let's see what that gives me. So in the numerator, I'll have secant squared of x dx. And then in the denominator, I can bring this one over cosine to the fourth inside. And that's gonna give me the square root of, well, I've got cosine cubed over cosine to the fourth. So that means I'll have a cosine of x type term. So a single cosine in the denominator. And then I've got this cosine of x plus a in the numerator. So let's take this cosine of x plus a and pull it apart using the sum angle formula for cosine. So that's gonna give us cosine of x, cosine of a minus sine of x, sine of a. And I'll go ahead and split that into two fractions while I'm at it so I can do that without too much trouble. Okay, but now notice some simplification can happen. So this cosine x will cancel with this cosine x, so that's nice. And then this sine x over cosine x is the same thing as the tangent of x. So let's rewrite this so we see what we've got. We've got the antiderivative, We've got a secant squared of x dx in the numerator. Well, really the dx is part of taking the antiderivative. And then downstairs we have the square root of cosine of a minus sine of a times tangent of x. And I wanna notice that this tangent of x is the only thing that has a variable in the denominator. Cosine of a is a constant and sine of a is also a constant. But look at what we've got. Tangent, the only thing with a variable in the denominator, the derivative of tangent in the numerator. So that gives us a u substitution. So let's let u be the interior of this square root. So that'll be cos a minus sine a tan x. That's gonna make du equal to minus sine a secant squared x dx. So derivative of cosine of a is zero because that's a constant. And then we can use the constant multiple rule for the other part. But now we can rearrange this a little bit, keeping in mind that what we freely have outside of the square root is secant squared x dx to write secant squared x dx as, let's see what it is. 
minus one over sine A D U. So in other words, we can take this object right here and make, make it minus one over sine A D U, and then everything under this radical is just U. Okay, so now let's rewrite it using that substitution. So this minus one over sine A can just be brought, in, brought outside. We have minus one over sine A, and then the antiderivative of du over the square root of u, but I wanna write that as u to the minus half, so I can easily use the power rule. So recall that the power rule says that we increase the exponent by one and divide by the new exponent. Increasing the exponent by one will change minus a half to a half. Dividing by that new exponent is the same thing as multiplying by two. That's gonna give us minus two over sine a, and then u to the half, but that's the square root of u, but I can just take that u and rewrite it with our substitution. So the square root of u is really the square root of this thing. So I've got cosine of a minus sine of a tangent of x. And we can't forget the plus c for our integration constant. So let's see what we've got. We've got the integral or the antiderivative of this function has been evaluated down to this, minus two over sine a, square root of cosine a minus sine a tan x plus the constant. And that's a good place to stop.